Good morning, everybody. Um, we're here. I'm here with Andrew this morning, which is rather lovely, and we're in St Mark's, and you can see the uh, beautiful west window behind me as the sun is shining outside. So, morning prayer this morning, as usual, we'll only be reading the gospel reading set for today. If you would like to read your, the other readings uh, at home, then today's psalm is Psalm 37, um, a fairly long one this, today, so Psalm 37. And our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Joshua, and it's the whole of chapter 23. So if you want to join in uh, with that afterwards, uh, reading that, the whole of chapter 23 of Joshua. And when we get there, our Gospel reading this morning is from Luke's Gospel, and it's chapter 12, verses 32 to 40. And we will be reading those together uh, in a moment. So morning prayer on Thursday, the 18th of June. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so we'll go straight into our first reading from Luke's Gospel. So reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, beginning at the 32nd verse. Do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is a commemoration, which Andrew is going to tell you yes. a bit about. Two very striking sentences have come from that reading. One, for where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Wow, that's a challenging uh, statement, isn't it? And then you must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Well, today in the Anglican calendar of prayer, we've only just discovered this as we're setting up here, um, we commemorate the feast of Bern, the commemoration of Bernard Mazeki. You may never have heard of him. He's one of the lesser known, and he is the one of the first martyrs of Africa. Um, and I have a little personal connection here because he, he lived in what is now Zimbabwe in Rhodesia, and his shrine where he was martyred is just five miles from the, from the school where I went to and, and I was, studied for six years in the African bush. Um, a remarkable place and a remarkable story. Bernard Mazeki was a villager, born as a little villager in, in, in Mozambique, um, and uh, set off to Cape Town and lived in the slums of Cape Town for a while. Um, but then went to school and was taught by the Cowley Fathers um, in Cape Town and became Christian. And they took him up to what was then Rhodesia. Um, and he was eventually ordained and became the first black missionary into, into um, southern Rhodesia 
and set up a mission in this place, which is say five miles from where I, I spent six years at school, in the bush, amongst tribal people. Um, and his ministry blossomed. It surprised me, he was particularly good at languages, and it said that he, he was able to speak ten languages. And as a young African Christian, he was able to convert um, the Bible into many different African local African languages. A huge ministry. Um, but his, his ministry, whilst he made many converts in the area, and his mission became a thriving place, both with the school um, and, of course, medical facilities as well. Um, he, he got the anger of local witch doctors and, and tribal um, religions, big people. Um, and eventually he was, he was speared to death. But there's an even more in 1896. Um, but there's a bit of a miracle there, because he was reportedly speared to death in his hut. Um, and staggered to the hillside and staggered up to a rock. Um, and there's still a shrine of the rock. But um, his family heard, saw a light shine on this rock and heard a great sound um, and went to find him, but his body was never found. His body disappeared. Um, so he is regarded as, as one of the first African martyrs who, who converted um, many tribal people in that part of remote part of Central Africa to Christianity. I was also had the privilege of being confirmed by the first black bishop in, in Southern Africa, which is quite remarkable actually, when we think about it, so, of how long there have been Christians in Africa, and, and it wasn't until the 1970s that we had the first black bishop there. Um, so that, 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 that rings very uh, strong bells, but it struck me very much as a child visiting this place where a, where a young missionary was martyred for his faith and what he gave up and what he served and what he died for, how he was ready um, to serve uh, the gospel and ready to stand even for death, even to death um, for it. And, and when you think of that phrase, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Well, for Bernard Mazeki, his treasure was with the gospel, with, with the teaching, with leading, with, with, with bringing people to Christ. Um, and he spent his life and gave his life doing that. But it begs the question for all of us, where is our treasure? Um, where is our heart? And it's a real challenge, it's a challenge to every single one of us daily. We've had quite a conversation this morning when, when reading this passage through this, earlier this morning um, about that, haven't we, about how we Hold on to possession. Can, can, can I share the little story? Uh, yeah, when yeah, when yeah. I was much younger, my first grandmother, um, she, 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 was, she was a real hoarder of things and very possessive of those things. So uh, her house was full of ornaments, collected over the years, and you couldn't touch them or knock them, or they had to be in the right place, and, and everything was very special. Um, and then she got dementia, and she, she actually got herself into a home and left her house and got us as the family said to us, get rid of everything. Um, and, and I had the job with my uncle of, of, of clearing her house once she had all the arrangements made for the stay and it was her wish to stay in this home. She died shortly afterwards. But to clearing her house, and it's very powerful to, to, to think of all these things that she possessed and she valued, which she'd actually just let go of and didn't matter, didn't want. Mm. And it, it's the same for all of us, you know, we, we gather so much stuff, mm. but what do they really mean, actually, ultimately? Again, where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Where is our treasure? treasure? And, and, and at the end of the day, are we ready for the kingdom? And do our lives express the journey mm. of that kingdom? So, Jesus is not saying in here that we shouldn't have things. No and that we shouldn't have money, but that we should be wary of where our hearts are, that we don't connect Sorry. ourselves only to the things and the wants of our house and the way we're living in. In the West, obviously, we have to earn money and we live the way our society lives and we, it's very difficult to live another way. Um, but we have to be very conscious of what we do with the money that we have and everything, everything that we have is God-given. And, and we need to be aware that we're giving back 
to God and to his creation, which is his people and this world. So it's not that we should sell everything and um, no. give it all away, but that we mindful. Be mindful of and, and, and using what we have in the purpose of the kingdom and that being our primary purpose and role, whatever that means for each one of us. And mm. each of us will have a different call. And actually, of course, it's relevant to this, this situation. You know, That's having been much. through what we've been through, what, what, what do we learn from that in terms of what, where is our treasure and mm. what are the kingdom values we've learned from this experience? Yeah, so let's leave it there. What mm. have we learnt? What have we learnt? Shall we pray? We pray to you, our Father in heaven. We give thanks for your grace and your very many blessings and gifts of the life, love, forgiveness and fortitude that you give us. We give thanks for all that we receive from you. We give thanks for all that we receive from life and people of this church and this benefice. We pray in these difficult times that you would inspire our bishops, our clergy, and all ministers who seek to serve your people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for Christ's call to follow him, to bear witness to God's kingdom. Give us boldness to stand up for our beliefs and perseverance in the face of hostility. We give thanks for our Queen and country, for all who have authority in this nation and in nations around the world. We think of all those places around the world where there is still war and injustice where there have been natural disasters. And we pray, Lord, that you would strengthen all leaders to serve the people with integrity, wisdom, and faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for this astonishingly beautiful and bountiful world. world. Give us determination to protect it from abuse. We give thanks for the support and care of our families and friends and all those in our communities. We pray for all of those around us, those in this community here in Ampfield, in North Baddersley and in Chilworth. Praying particularly for our schools, for the families who have gone back to school, those children, and for our teachers and staff trying to keep them safe while teaching. We pray for all of those in our communities who have helped us through this difficult time. We think of all those who are lonely and isolated. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to find ways to help them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we give thanks for the health that we have. We think of others who are unwell at the moment, those we hold in our own hearts and minds. those across the country and the world who have been affected by this coronavirus. And especially all those in our health services who look after us. Lord, we pray you would bring healing, patience and hope to all who suffer from pain or infirmity. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And we give thanks for those who have died. And we pray for those who have been left behind. We pray 
particularly for the family of Ivor Smith, whose funeral will take place in the coming week. And we give thanks for all of those whom we have loved and seen and mourned, and for all the joy and love they brought us. May we, with them, have a place in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can no, do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.